Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Newton Silas and today we have a very interesting video to react to. This one says that I accepted Islam in an unexpected way. And this is a reverse story of Dawood, right? Okay, I believe that this is going to be a very interesting one. So, so guys, when we get down to the video, we can be able to know some of the reasons or things you understand he faced before he made that um, very decision. So if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, before we get on to the video, I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's religion. This is basically for educational purposes and I believe that at the end of this video, we all are going to learn from this. So guys, let's get on to the video and check this out. And uh, in November of last year, uh, the opportunity for the transplant came up and we travelled four hours to Sydney uh, to the hospital where it was going to be performed. And uh, the day of her operation, I decided that I was going to uh, go to a church. And as it happened, I ended up passing by a mosque and uh, I went into the mosque. Everyone who converts to Islam always says that they are returning to Islam. This is because they were born Muslims and were only brought up in their parents' religion. Dawood Reed, formerly David Reed, is a man from Canberra, Australia. He was raised and educated in a Catholic environment. At the age of 60, he finally got the most beautiful thing in his life which was to convert to Islam. At the age of 20, Dawood Reed began to drift away from the Catholic Church. His understanding of the Trinity began to loosen. It didn't make sense to him. But uh, all I knew was that um, I had no faith in the Trinity and in my upbringing in the Catholic Church. And I couldn't ever, ever fathom how, you know, that God could be God, uh, the Father. God could be God. Jesus and God could be God the Holy Spirit that was always three to me I never knew who to pray to and I felt divided absolutely divided Dawood Reed is married and has two children every parent loves their children so does Dawood Reed he is very happy with his children but his happiness had to stop his second child died of cancer at the age of seven Dawood Reed was very sad he could not accept God's destiny he really hated God at that time uh, my young uh, second son died of cancer at the age of seven, uh, which was a very sad time in my life. And it was also the time that I turned totally against God. I hated God. And to prove it, I went and got a tattoo of a pentagram on my left hand, which I've since had removed. But uh, it shows you the mindset I had at the time after the loss of that child. The trials and tribulations in his life came one after another. After Dawood lost his beloved son, he almost lost his beloved wife. She had to undergo a lung transplant due to her illness. But this time, Dawood surrendered and accepted reality. He surrendered to God, he prayed, and wanted to go visit the church. I resigned myself to the fact that I was going to lose my wife of 30 years. And I can remember standing in the kitchen alone and very sincerely, sincerely calling out to God. And I remember that my mindset was, if it's your will, God, save my wife. And if it's not, I'm going to accept it. I'm just going to accept it. My wife came out of the intensive care unit and they were sort of like saying the next time would be the end. And two days later, that telephone call came from a Sydney hospital, St. Vincent's Hospital, saying there were some lungs available. And uh, I still ponder that to this day, the effectiveness of that prayer. There was a mad dash to Sydney that evening. It was preparation for the lung transplant. And early the next morning, the operation went ahead. And I ended up sitting outside the hospital. And my first thought was, you could go and have a drink you know it'd make things better and it was only a fleeting thought and i decided no i was going to look for a church and uh still confused and i went to the nearest church that was there and the doors were locked um, i had been interested in the noahide movement some weeks previously and thought maybe the synagogue but uh realized i wasn't welcome at the synagogue because i wasn't jewish and as it would happen i went past a mosque 
and uh, I went into the mosque and uh, yeah I, I gained some sort of connection there to it all sort of fell into place over one God it uh, became very evident to me there was one God there was no intermediaries to to this one God uh, there were no saints in the middle there were no praying to Mary in the middle and there was no praying to Jesus in the middle it dawned on me that Jesus when he was in the uh, in the garden was praying to God he wasn't praying to himself there, w there was no three in one and uh, it just dawned on me it was an epiphany and then I realized I decided that um, I wasn't going to rush into this so I made some inquiries and I ended up doing meeting a, a, a nice Muslim man who uh, said he'd, he'd lead me through um, a course called Understanding Islam and I saw him for several weeks, uh, three, four times a week and uh, he led me through the program and eventually I, it all made perfect sense to me, absolutely made perfect sense to me. Dawood had no more doubts. Everything about Islam made sense to him. Finally, he said the Shahada, Masha'Allah. Ashhadu, Ashhadu, an, an, la, la, ilaha, ilaha, illa, illa, la, la, wa ashhadu, wa ashhadu, anna, anna, Muhammadan, Muhammadan, abduhu, abduhu, wa rasuluh, wa rasuluh. That's it. You're a Muslim. Welcome to Islam. Trials are not fun. Trials also come in different forms. It can be in the form of wealth, physical, poverty, children, wife or husband, even to work and business relationships. However, the trials given by Allah to His servants are actually a form of Allah's love. And with these trials, humans are ready to enter a new step, whether to get closer to Allah or vice versa, away from Allah. The thing that must be remembered Every test or trial given is always tucked away the solution. Islam is the solution to all life's problems. That uh, the morals and the guidelines of Islam uh, could cure a lot of the world's ills. And uh, it certainly has in my life. Um, God answered me. The, the transplant of my wife was successful. I've now um, gotten her and I'm very thankful to God for that. That's all for today's video. Hopefully, it will inspire many people. Go back to the Quran, because all the answers to your questions are there. Don't hesitate. Open the Quran and read it. Thanks for watching. In November. This is a very interesting um, video. Watching this um, revived story, of course, is very uh, touching one, of course. Is something that uh, even him, you understand, was not um, expected it to happen. But anyway, things like that, you understand, happen. You know, one thing about this life is sometimes we do face these trials, comes to us hardship and all that. But then, when all these things, you understand, happen, I think that uh, what you should do as a believer is you should rejoice because God is about to do a new thing in your life. And that's why when you look at understand the story of this um, very man that would you would realize that uh, he was really facing you understand a lot of challenge challenge of losing a child the challenge of losing a wife and all that and he was just there being confused asking himself like what should he do and that's when he began to want to pray to God and that's why you understand God was able to set him free do you think that it was just a coincidence that um, he was going to the synagogue and then it was locked and then provided that he was not a Jew, it, which automatically means that he was not welcomed there to the point that he find the monks and then he walked in and that's how he gained his salvation. You know, it was not a coincidence. It was just God doing that makes it understand happen that um very way like i rightly say in a sense in my videos is like everything always happens in a stand for a reason god always have his own way of doing things and that's why all those things in a stand happen to him they happen to him so that his souls can be saved if those things could have not happened that could have not draw his attention to begin to ask questions where is god 
and if you didn't ask those kind of questions and then start praying and then begin to start looking for answers you see he could have not been saved he could have just be the normal husband have his wife his kid and that's it and then probably when his time comes and then maybe probably he died and that's it right but then when all those things in sin happen that's when he begin to ask himself in a sense those questions so it means that he at his comfortable state he tends not to ask all these um questions and all these things is all applicable to some of us sometimes when we are living in a sense a happy life you have the money you have the house you have your children you buy whatever you want to buy you have a healthy life and all those things right at that point in time we begin to start feeling as if maybe probably it's by your own power that makes you to have all those health and wealth and all that right but then when challenge in a sense begin to happen that's when you begin to start asking yourself at some point i do not know i'm not saying always but then at some point for people who may be living very comfortable they have almost everything at some point some of them end up like kind of becoming atheists or even if they choose to still be a christian or a muslim at some point you see that they, they are not that very dedicated or very yeah they're not that very dedicated to the service of god or very devoted like they will not be very devoted to the things of god but until challenge come until this kind of situation begin to happen that's when it starts in the understand or run into god but then like i rightly see god just have his own way of you understand drawing people you understand closer to him probably that's the way that god wanted to use you to save his um soul and that's where all those things in a sense happen now if we are to talk about in a standard trinity for me i'm still of an opinion that both the christians and the muslim world worship the same god we pray to the same god just like how moses was there he encouraged the people to to pray to god so the way to god during the time of moses was through moses right yeah same thing is applicable to the time of jesus right p christians believe that god manifests himself in a sense in the human form right and that is when the jesus christ came into this world don't forget you understand the story of how jesus christ came you understand the revelation from angel gabriel or jibril as if you are a muslim and then therefore it make us to understand that all the spirit of god overshadowed in the mary and then from there she conceived and she gave birth to jesus so you see that's the spirit of god right manifesting in human flesh right and that's why jesus christ says that what no one can go through the father except through him it's not that because jesus in a stand is another different god of its own or the holy spirit is also another different god of his own no we are saying it manifests he returns back right and that's why when he was there of course he prayed in the garden and prayed to the father he's trying to make them to understand that there is somebody superior than him right yeah and that's why he do it right because he is a human flesh so at that point in time he has a limitation right so he was not a fully god in a sense at that point in time but then that's why when he died and after that he came back in a stand and that's why he says that what all power is given unto me in both heaven and on earth so you can make reference to um matthew chapter 28 from verse um 19 but then you can look at it from 17 where he came and then he made the disciples before he told them you go and then preach the good news in a stand and then um, baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy ghost even though the muslim don't believe you understand in some of those teachings and all that but then well it's very interesting and that's why when you look at it in the, in the terms of um, muhammad right then if you look at it in the terms of muhammad right so it means that we follow through muhammad you understand you go to god so they are not saying muhammad is a god right you got the point like so now this is what is going to happen at the judgment day on the judgment day for those or the jews who believe that they want to follow the mosaic law right so the mosaic law is what they're going to use to judge them for those who choose Isa alayhi salam, that's Jesus Christ, in a as God. So they are going to use that, in a stand, whatever Jesus Christ have teach, in a stand, to go to judge. Same thing is applicable, in a sense, to the Muslim. If you say that you are a Muslim, of course, that's what they're going to use, in a sense, to judge you through the Quran. They'll use the Quran to be able to, like, judge you, to be able to make it to heaven. That's how it's all, in a sense, being across the understand religions in a stand line but then is i know that of course a lot will not believe you understand 
what I'm saying. But then for me, I feel like you understand it's normal, okay? It's normal, you understand? If you don't believe me, it's still normal. But then anyway, I would like you to still share your thought and opinion at the comment section. Let's have a very interactive um dialogue at the comment section so guys this is the end of my video if you like my reaction if you like share and subscribe and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys you remain blessed and i'll see you in my next video bye bye